So I started thinking raw in uh, 2012 because I had moved back from Toronto uh, wanting to start a community engaged arts organization that would serve rural and First Nation communities and use the arts to bring people together uh, to bridge social divides in this area. It started with a singular vision but it, the project was open enough and held by enough people that um, it was able to be shaped by so many. project that we did for Thinking Rock Community Arts was the River Speak Community Play. It actually started off being called If Rivers Could Talk. I thought that rivers and waterways were something that everyone from this area could relate to. I was told early on by one of our Anishinaabe uh, advisors that the rivers do talk and we know that they do so there was no sense saying if rivers could talk so the project became the River Speak. In 2013, the pilot project was happening in Blind River and I was able to go with a friend of mine who was visiting to check things out. They didn't know much about Thinking Rock at that time, but having the opportunity to participate a little bit in the pilot project turns out was a, an interesting piece of foreshadowing for what would happen later. When the Time for the River Speak project started to develop, uh, after 2013, I ended up moving home to help Robin uh, develop the, you know, the background uh, frameworks for Thinking Rock and uh, get, becoming incorporated as a not-for-profit. So we started hearing stories of the serpent that lives in the rivers of the area and travels through the rivers and like it's very much a present day um, spirit or being that lives there. So we created this giant river serpent puppet, which is probably like 20 feet long. And it was really neat because it was an opportunity for people of all ages to come together and create something. So to me, that was one of the more powerful things about the whole process was seeing how in creating these ways of, of um, creating things artistically together, um, we were able to see different people come together and interact and develop friendships who probably would never have known each other before or would never have taken the time to or had the opportunities to be in the same place even as each other. The Rivers Speak play from, from the very outset um, has had a lot to do with water. And so Marley approached us and suggested that we should get um, Thunderbird Woman involved in the play and Thunderbird Woman was originally designed by Marley's nephew Isaac Murdoch and he gave us permission to use Thunderbird Woman in the play. The first thing that we did for the River Speak was we held a week-long drop-in art making activity or workshop I guess with Mississauga First Nation at the sports complex and we invited, uh, I think there were about nine artists from Sketch and Jump Lee's Theatre from Toronto to come up and work with us and help us deliver this programming. We worked with those artists because they're established community engaged arts organizations in Toronto that I had been familiar with when I lived there and um, needed some support because this was the first project of its kind that I would be part of and that Thinking Rock would be running. 
So we brought up these experienced artists to support us. I think originally we thought it would be a three-year process, but it ended up being five years. We were really lucky that we did get some good funding for the, the play itself, the final production, so we were able to bring in a team of, I think there was like 20 um, artists, local and visiting artists that were part of the like professional production team, and we put them up for three months to do all of the rehearsals and um, just sort of put the final production together and work with the community members to do that. We were also working with Blind River and Serpent River First Nation and Elliott Lake. So it was a pretty ambitious project in a lot of ways, um, but one of them was trying to engage these four different communities. So we would go to the different communities and host like uh, community conversation about the idea and just kind of to introduce it to people. What I learned about this production is the idea of the importance of community theatre. I hadn't realized, um, they I met them two years ago, they had actually been here previous to that and they'd gathered stories from elders and they'd had uh, children's workshops and they'd played at creating all kinds of different things with different people over a tremendous amount of time. It couldn't have been anything else but an enriching, positive community experience. I think it's important not just for this but for people to get to know one another and to broaden, broaden our, our thoughts as we learn to one, understand one another and the differences but not just the similarities in our cultures and the way we think. You know, which is what brings us together, is the similarities in how we think. From an outsider from this community, I'm, I'm visiting up from Toronto as a visiting artist. Um, it's a way, it seems, for to folks to connect with each other, to share stories, um, to create something that is both beautiful and important in the stories that are being put forth. And a way of also just a gathering, you know, art is a place to gather people and to connect and to tell stories. For me, it's been a gateway into uh, First Nations culture that you know, I never had before, and it's just, I'm really grateful that I met these people who were willing to share their culture, and that we could, you know, through kind of extensive discussion and, you know, conferencing <laughs> with each other, uh, kind of find a way that we could do a fusion of the two cultures, like the settler culture and the, the Anishinaabe culture. Young people in this area, specifically within Northern Ontario as well, um, don't tend to have the opportunity to experience uh, performances or, or uh, uh, mediums of art like this. So there's very little opportunity for people to try out acting or singing or musical works uh, or even doing visual arts. And we really thought that this was a project that could help us work with the community to get some feedback from them about what their interests were. And this is the best way we found to connect people who have ideas and people who have artistic ambition, uh, along with people who have stories to tell, stories to share, and really brings together a lot of uh, demographic dynamics, such as uh, children and uh, young adolescents, adults and elders and seniors in the community. Um, they're all being brought together under the same roof and they're all talking about the same thing and they're all talking about something they're really passionate about. And that's what we saw as an opportunity that if we could bring that here, we could give everybody an opportunity to experience something they've never experienced before. Something that really struck me at the, when we were actually doing the performances was just like how many people came out to see the play and how positive the reaction was and it was just this kind of snowball effect from the beginning to the end of the run of the play of people telling each other about, like word of mouth about, about the play and that you should come see this. It's a really, you know, I, mean, I don't know exactly what people were saying to each other, but it definitely got people to come out and seeing the diversity of people who were in the audience and were witnessing the play and there were just some very emotional parts in the play like when Marley was singing the strawberry song and 
and then I can't even talk about it. It's so like emotional, but um, and the the performers would come and give strawberries to people, and that's like a symbol of reconciliation. And it was just so like touching, you know, to see that. And um, I mean, the music itself was incredibly powerful, and just like bridging the process that we went through with with Marley, uh, Marley Day, who was the elder uh, that worked with us on the music for the most part, and the um, Pat and Julie and the other musicians, and working together to bridge the Anishinaabe traditional music with the um, Canadian traditional music and the fiddles and with the hand drumming and the singing, and it was just that process of co-creating that music together I think was really um, extremely powerful and I think was also kind of symbolic of the process of relationship building between settler and indigenous people. They, at the same time working together on a project like this really helped us show that there is a blueprint for what it can look like when you have young people who really want to make something happen. I would say if you have a vision for something then just go for it <laughs> because it can seem you know there will be a lot of naysayers a lot of people saying oh that's a crazy idea or that's too far-fetched or that'll never work and whatever but um, I think if you're really committed to it and you're really passionate about you know doing something then you can find you know find the allies and find the collaborators and find the partners that can help you execute that vision. There are so many so many people, um, start to finish the River Speak project, engaged more than 4,000 people. And, you know, that's too many people to mention, to name, to thank properly in this documentary, but we, we would not have been successful without all of those people and with all of the others who helped behind the scenes. So we're not mentioning you in this documentary, but we are so thankful for the fact that you helped. Yeah, well, I guess I just hope that um, that th through, you know, seeing seeing the play and seeing the this documentary about the play that um, that people will come to, you know, have a deeper appreciation for the stories and the history of this place and uh, the people who have been here for thousands of years and and. The, the amazing culture um, that exists here and how much there is to learn from each other. And I think that that's really important. So I hope that people take that away from this. It had so many impacts on so many people that just the, the fact that a project that had set out with a, a fairly specific vision and, and set of goals and desires could mean so many things to so many people really got me thinking differently about the, the further reaching impacts of an art project as well and that it's never just one thing it's so many different things and in, a, in the work that we do which is so multi-vocal it's just so interesting that the impacts are, are so like multi-perspectival. In all we've had around 4,000 people be part of this whole process so you know, I hope that each of them has taken away a little bit of that kind of, um, that journey toward relationship building and, and reconciliation.